I am Dr. Olga Surina, and I would like to say a few words in memory of Professor Kuni. First time, I met Professor Kuni in 1996 at the conference in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, it was my first conference as a PhD student of Nanyang Technological University. Professor Kuni gave a very inspiring keynote talk on the future technology and uh, on virtual reality. Later, he also came as a visiting professor to NTU, uh, where I worked as assistant professor. And we met with him on several occasions and uh, discussed uh, my research on scientific data visualization, uh, visual search, databases, and virtual orthopedic surgery training. I learned from him that inspiring students is the main professor's tasks in supervising students' research project. The paper we are going to present today describes an innovative approach in integrating human factors evaluation in virtual reality-based training. This innovative research paper, in collaboration with people from many research areas and industry, would be a good contribution to the memory of Professor Kuni, who worked in many research areas and did interdisciplinary research. Welcome to our presentation. Here, we will present our paper of Human Factors Evaluation in VR-Based Shunting Training. The outline of our presentation is as follows. Let us go through some background introduction to our research. The shunting of engineering trains is safety critical because it involves the maneuver of large carriage within a confined space. It requires good collaboration between workers. Currently, the shunting was taught either on the job, for example, working with the actual train, or off the job by lectures, workshops, etc. We propose to complement the current teaching resources with Virtual Reality Training Simulator. VR training has several benefits. Firstly, VR training is safe and realistic. Secondly, VR training circumvents the limited availability of physical engineering train. VR training can have the additional benefits of human factor evaluation. We can monitor the fatigue and stress states via built-in eye tracking in the VR head mounted display. Existing studies about human factors in railway industry consist of the evaluation of technical and non-technical skills. Technical skills can be evaluated by performance metrics whereas non-technical skills refer to the cognitive, social, and personal resource skills that complement technical skills. Core non-technical skills include teamwork, leadership, situation awareness, decision-making, communication, coping with fatigue, stress management, etc. In this paper, we describe a novel VR-based system that allows training and evaluation of stress and fatigue of railway operators that are the indicators of the most challenging tasks in training. For the application, we created a realistic copy of the engineering train, wagon, workshop, and depot. This was done in several iterations by manually measuring all details, and taking pictures for later reference, and to extract textures for the 3D models. The models had been created with future simulation in mind, and are split in logical subparts, such as switches, buttons, or levers. Since the application is for virtual reality, we have to guarantee that it is very performant. A high frame rate and proper interaction design make this application smooth and realistic. On top of the 3D models, we implemented a simulation of the train controls and physics that are needed for the scenario. This was done by understanding and replicating the underlying systems of the train, such as the pipe pressures or control logic. The result is that multiple users can freely use the trains and wagon in the depot area to practice several scenarios. Interaction is done by full hand tracking and haptic feedback. 
The only artificial interaction system is a teleport function due to space constraints. All other interaction have to be done as in reality by grabbing, turning, pressing, holding or such. A user interface for the supervisor shows the current state of the trains and makes it easy to help if a trainee is stuck in a certain task. The whole system also logs every single event or interaction for later review. For fatigue and stress monitoring, we analyze the eye tracking data. We use eye diameters and areas of interest as features and SVM as classifier. The results are displayed in real time on the VR training interface. A report will also be generated after the training session, which displays the breakdown of fatigue or stress states across the various tasks and the overall performance of the subject. The monitoring interface is shown in this figure. The green and red ribbon represent the levels of fatigue and stress, where green color indicates a low level of fatigue or stress, red indicates a high level of fatigue or stress. To validate our training system, we recruited 12 technical skilled trainee subjects and 3 trainer subjects for the experiment. We want to validate 3 hypotheses. Hypothesis 1. The VR-based training will not induce extra fatigue or stress and physical uncomfortableness to the trainees. Hypothesis 2. The VR-based simulation provides a suitable environment for shunting operation training. Hypothesis 3. Trainers and trainees prefer to utilize VR-based simulation for shunting operation training than other traditional training methods, such as video training, lecture training and on-site training. The experiment scenario is as such. The subjects were asked to conduct shunting operation scenario in VR. In the design scenario, the signal aspect is red by default and can be switched to yellow by the trainers. The master executive train operator, ETO, is expected to respond and stop shortly before the red aspect and wait for it to be changed to yellow. If the master ETO passes the red aspect, Operations Control Center, OCC, would inform ETO to stop immediately. After the trainer changes the aspect to yellow, ETO should respond and proceed. ETO also needs to sound the horn to alert others of the approaching train. The speed should be controlled at all times, should not exceed 5 km per hour in the workshop and 18 km per hour in the depot and pit. If the speed exceeds 18 km per hour, the consist will stall, and the ETO has to restart the consist. We designed these questionnaires to collect feedbacks from our subjects. Feedback will be collected regarding their perceived mental states and their VR experience. We also asked the subjects to indicate their perceived advantages and disadvantages of VR training. From the questionnaire feedback, subjects indicate that the overall fatigue levels and visual acuity remain unchanged. The overall stress, eye tiredness and neck pain increased a little. Other states, such as eye strain, back pain, headache and sleepiness decreased. In general, the results of T-test in all the states are above 0.05. Accordingly, hypothesis 1 is confirmed. Subjects indicate that the presence rating, realism rating, and sense of movement are high. They rated that they paid much attention to visuals, but less attention to audios. The stress and fatigue level after the VR training were lower than 3, which indicates that the VR training did not bring any extra stress and fatigue to the trainees. The effectiveness of the training in VR was rated as 4.25, which is slightly lower than the effectiveness of the on-site training, and the preference is still with on-site training. However, they rated that they preferred VR training to other traditional training methods such as video and lecture-based ones. The trust toward VR training was also rated high. Similar feedback was obtained from the trainer as well. As shown in Table 4, the trainers agreed that training in VR is effective, and they preferred to use it over videos and lectures, although on-site training is still considered as the best training method. They also mentioned that the possibility of using VR for shutting training is very high, 
as the VR system can help individuals learn the shunting operation faster than training based on videos and lectures. From the feedback from both the trainees and the trainers, we conclude that hypothesis 2 is confirmed, and hypothesis 3 is partially confirmed. We present here the perceived advantages and disadvantages of VR training from both the trainees and the trainers. The percentage of trainers or trainees who agreed on each advantage or disadvantage point is shown in tables 5 and 6, respectively. Compared with trainers, trainees tended to tick more advantage points of the VR training. Four listed advantages, namely, increase engagement, increase training accessibility, immersive learning, allow repetitive training, were selected by all trainees. Whereas only two advantages of the VR training, namely, save physical effort, and, allow repetitive training, were selected by all trainers. For disadvantage of the VR-based training, the focuses are mainly on physical side effects, for example, headache, blurred vision, motion sickness and eye strain. However, very few trainees reported discomforts during or after the experiment despite indicating it in the questionnaires. In conclusion, in this paper, we present a VR-based training for shunting operations in railway. Our experiment validated that VR-based training will not induce extra fatigue, stress and physical uncomfortableness to the trainees. The VR-based simulator provides a suitable virtual alternative for shunting operation training, and both trainees and trainers reported a positive VR experience. Trainers and trainees prefer to use a VR-based simulator for shunting operation training than other traditional training methods, such as video training and lecture training. In the future, we will analyze the biosignals and behavioral data collected from the experiment, and assess the competence of the trainees. Thank you for your attention.